Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be working on this vintage Canadian Pacific F unit. I picked this locomotive up at a train show fairly recently for either five or ten Canadian dollars, and it looks to be in uh, fairly good shape, but the thing that I found very intriguing about it is that I am not familiar with the type of drive this locomotive has. If you look on the bottom here, you can see it's made in Japan, but it doesn't seem to have any labeling for what manufacturer it is. And it's got a very unusual coupling system. It overall just looked to be something I, I hadn't seen before. And uh, after testing it, I discovered that it doesn't run. So today we're gonna see if we can get this thing riding the rails once again. And I think it's gonna be a bit of an adventure because uh, I don't really know what uh, I'm gonna be finding on the inside here. So we'll take it over to the track. I'll show you all what it's currently doing. Uh, if I recall correctly, it's not picking up any power, so probably an electrical issue of some sort. But we'll find out soon enough, and uh, if we're lucky, we'll get this thing going again. Anyway, let's begin. Let's take it over to the track. So if we get this thing all set up on the track, I'll show you all what it's doing right now, which really, as I remember, is not a whole lot. Give it some power here. Well. Oh. Okay, that's really interesting. I don't remember it doing anything last time. Huh. Well, that's actually a lot more promising than I was expecting, because, uh, yeah, last time this thing was not doing anything. We didn't have any current draw, so there's still clearly some sort of an electrical issue within it, but that is uh, it's something, at least. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe the condition of these wheels have something to do with that, but I don't know. Let's take it over to the workbench and see if we can figure out what exactly is going on. Well, I gotta say that that track test gave me a lot more hope for this locomotive. I don't know why it did some stuff this time and not the time before, but in any case, I'm not gonna complain. It's a good sign. So without further ado, let's crack open the drive and see if we can figure out what exactly is going on. And that's pretty much all F units have. You just lift up the uh, tabs on either side and the shell pops right off. And here we are inside. And right off the bat, I can see we've got a broken wire. Maybe that's our problem. <laughs> yeah. I think that that's supposed to be connected to uh, this uh, soldering joint right here. So I, what must be going on is the first time we tested this thing, this wire just wasn't touching uh, any of this metal here. And just from moving it around, maybe it was making a little bit of contact there. So that might be our main problem. I've got my uh, power pack here. We'll just try uh, putting some power directly to the motor and see if she'll uh, go. Yeah, seems pretty lively. I'm still gonna service the entire drive because uh, these wheels just look terrible. And uh, I'd also hate to know the condition of the lubricants, but uh, yeah, this is all very promising. Yeah, check out this old uh, drive linkage too, back when they used to use springs. I think uh, these worked okay. The only problem is uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure they create weird vibration issues. I don't know. Could be wrong about that. This engine's definitely been modified though. I mean, like, look at this. Somebody's actually uh, put a bit of wood to help uh, hold the uh, trucks in, in place. So that's kind of odd. And this whole coupling assembly just looks really bizarre. So that's all... Kind of strange. Well, there you have it, folks. This engine is a Revell locomotive from 1956. Uh, it's a T3500. So that's pretty interesting. Um, maybe uh, 1956 is just the part number because this looks a lot more modern than a 1956 locomotive, but um, I've got to imagine that it was probably made in the 60s or 70s. I had no idea, though, that Revell made... Uh, had their locomotives made in Japan, or at least the drives. I always thought they were uh, made in the States. And I guess I was wrong about that. Anyway, I'll get my soldering iron out. We'll connect that back on, and then we'll service the entire drive, and hopefully this thing will run. Gotta say, it really is a treat when you open up something like this, and the problem is just in plain sight. You don't have to go digging around through all sorts of different parts of the drive, hunting down short circuits and things like that.
Let's do a quick test here to see if that fixed the problem by applying power to the uh, two separate grounds. Oh yeah! That is not bad. Wow. Well, still gonna open up these trucks just to throw some fresh oil in there and uh, clean up the wheels, but uh, if that was really the only problem, this has gotta be one of the more, maybe one of the easiest repairs I've ever seen. Yeah, it's gonna need a little bit of work, but that's all really clean. There's not much lubricant in here, which is not great because uh, metal brass parts like this really require thick grease, but uh, everything's in good shape. These aren't stripped. You know, I've seen some of these models where uh, everything's in horrible condition. I really like the design so far too. Just a simple uh, clip instead of uh, some of these things, the way they hold the uh, side frames on. It's a pretty complicated system, but it's all pretty straightforward. I'll try to clean up these wheels a little now. I'm now going to uh, reassemble the truck. I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on uh, these two parts here to keep uh, this whole thing lubricated. For the gears, however, though, I want to use uh, some grease. This is some Labelle 106. And when you're working with metal parts, brass parts, you really need to make sure you're putting a relatively thick lubricant on them. As metal parts create a lot more friction than plastic parts, and as a result, if you don't lubricate them properly, they will wear down very, very fast. I'll just put that in there and uh, mix in a little bit of oil. Now, grease really should be the primary thing when you're working with metal parts. All right, I'm just gonna quickly repeat the process on this truck and then I uh, might uh, service the motor if we can, but uh, it sounded like it was doing pretty well. I don't know. Might be able to get away with just oil oiling up the uh, bearings, but we'll see. This right here is the exact reason you want to always check on these locomotives. You know, stuff like this getting gearbox, dust, hair. Now this can put a lot of strain on the motor because it, you know, gets packed between the wheel and the bearing. And uh, you can actually end up burning out your motor if enough of this stuff gets in there. So always check. This is a very common problem with uh, HO scale locomotives, especially older ones where they might have been run on carpets and things like that.
Well, it's got the motor out, and I think it would be fairly easy to open it up. You know, you could probably pry up on these tabs right here, but just considering how well it's already running, I'm not so sure if I want to do that. You know, usually it's just opening this sort of thing up to service the commutator, but I find these can motors when you open them up, if you don't put them back together perfectly, they will sometimes run worse than, you know, they did before you worked on them. So. I think I'm just gonna leave this one, but if the locomotive has high current draw, then there's probably a problem with the commutator, in which case I'll take my chances on opening it. But for now, I think I'll just put it back inside the locomotive and hope for the best. Yeah, it looks like I've gone and busted a wire. I'll just quickly do a test to make sure everything's in order, but if it uh, if it turns over fine, I think we'll put the shell back on. Yeah, no problems. All right, let's take this thing over to the track. All right, moment of truth. No problems. Yeah, look at her go. Not the uh, quietest locomotive I've ever seen, but it seems to be running pretty well. Super fast too, I mean that's only what, 45% power? Well, it seems to be running pretty well. See what kind of low speed this thing can do. Yeah, it's definitely not gonna be winning any creeping competitions, but uh, ultimately it's running consistently, which is what really matters. And eh, I think these things were never really meant to be uh, perfectly uh, realistic. So uh, I'll cut it some slack there. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed. I certainly enjoyed working on this locomotive. It was uh, a straightforward repair, and I gotta say for uh, the type of design, uh, I thought it was really easy to work on. So it was, uh, yeah, really quite a treat. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed. And with that, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching.